Hey guys and welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to try and get this tub broken down. Uh, these are the orange spin danios um, and I put them outside without any real expectations of them breeding because they were relatively young. But I do believe there's some fry in here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take these hyacinth and toss them into the big bin for now because I'm going to wait a bit on breaking that one down. This will allow if there if there are any more um, eggs in these mops, it'll allow them to hatch out. You can see how impressive the root structure on these guys is. And then I'll take any of the floating plants that I want to keep and add it to the bin with the other floating plants um, from the rainbow tub. Now the plants don't need to be addressed for quite a while yet. They'll do just fine in this weather. But I do want to get the fish out. Uh, more for my convenience and my schedule than any other reason. Look at those cool roots. The salvinia has done really well. I'm going to move a lot of that into the fish room. I think what I'm going to end up doing is setting up one of these tubs. Not this tall one, but the ones like in the greenhouse. Um, up under my 150. Throw a light on it and see if I can't overwinter some of this stuff. But at the very least, before I add it to any aquariums with fish or invertebrates, I need to make sure it doesn't have any dragonfly larva or any contaminant um, predatory insect larva on it. So I'll probably hit it with some of that um, chitin inhibitor. Let it sit in the tub down there for several weeks um, before I add it to aquariums. That's a lot of them. Now I broke my favorite uh, summer tubbing net, but we have this other one that'll work out fine. Oh, there's a big old fish. So important to always look through all the stuff that you're pulling out of these bins, even if it just looks like detritus, because that's a pretty decent sized fish that I almost didn't see and here's another one this is a male I'll show them to you guys once I get them all out of here wow they're gorgeous so what I do is uh, I scrape the bottom to get up all the detritus and the leaves and other things that have fallen in here and then I leave it suspended in the tub so that I can pull that out without yanking out fish so that they can avoid being um, caught in the detritus. And then I lift it out, and there's fry and adults. So that's a good, good news. So I'm just gonna keep doing this, and then we'll set it up to drain. So all of a sudden I'm getting a ton of meteor minnow fry in this big 300 gallon. Try and get them in focus for you. So I'm going to leave this one running, or the fish out here, for as long as possible. Um, I counted about 50 fry this morning, so I'm just going to have to keep a super close eye on the weather and uh, move them in as needed, or as the weather dictates, and hope that I can grow out as many of these little tiny fry as possible. It's really challenging to try and get them in focus. But there's little teeny tiny guys. Microscopic. Up to, you know, a size that I could potentially pull. So I'm going to give them as much time as possible. What I do next is just tilt it on its side so that I can slowly dump out the rest of the water. Catching the fish um, as I see them. So this was my yield, and I hadn't, again, intended these fish to breed at all. Um, I was simply trying to grow them out so that they would look a bit better in the 150, and I was super successful in that regard. Now again, I chucked all the water hyacinth into, and the lily into this bin, so that if there were any eggs or small fry trapped in the long trailing roots, they could grow out in here with the meteor minnows for another few weeks. I'm going to 
do things a little differently for these guys. Because they're Danios and they're basically bomb proof, I'm going to set up a drip and drip them um, probably for about eight hours. Uh, and I just use a piece of airline tube and start a siphon, tie it in a knot. And I have the fish inside a dip and pour uh, so that when it overflows, it goes into the bucket. And I'll show you guys that up close in just a second. You can see it just does a drip. Depending on how. So you start the siphon. Then you tie a knot. And depending on how tight you tie the knot is how fast it will drip in there. So I'm going to set it to do a drip every second or so. And then I'll um, and then I'll set it so that the height of the tube that's in the aquarium won't be able to overflow my bucket just in case I forget I'm doing this. And I just use, again, one of the um, clips from a clip lamp to hold the tubing in place. And then I set this into the dip and pour, and then it will start to overflow until it fills the bucket. And once that volume has slowly, slowly, slowly um, been equalized, then I'll move the fish into the aquarium since they've been here since last October. Um, with this aquarium, as you guys know, I do a minimum of a six-month quarantine. These fish have been in the fish room for almost a year, so we should be good to go. So that's the specimen container or dip and pour inside the bucket to catch the overflow. It's dripping about one drip a second. I have it clipped up here into the aquarium so that it can gradually acclimate these guys. Now again, it's pointless to do a drip acclimation if you're not going to do it for a pretty, pretty long time. So we'll have to check in tomorrow on these guys to see how they look in the aquarium uh, if I want to get this video out on time. But again, the, po the point of this is to just very slowly acclimate them to the tank environment. Now, because this aquarium is kept so dilute, it shouldn't be really a massive shock at all, even from the rainwater. I'm really, really looking forward to having more of these guys in this aquarium because they put on a stunning display. So make sure you're subscribed with your notifications on so that you can see the update on this aquarium as I add all of the orange fendanios as well as the meteor minnows in the upcoming weeks. As always, thank you for your support and let me know below if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions.